Now let me ask you something. Do you ever want to go back in time? If you had the opportunity to go back in time, would you go back? Do you ever want to no, return to your former youth or something like that back? So you're saying our past, not just like Yeah, your past. If you know, if you knew what you're going to know now, would you like to go back and relive? Well, I think there's a lot of people like to go back and re relive the past. I know there's a character in Napoleon Dynamite that was, a, I think he was a football player or something. He wanted to go back and relive his the state championship. And I think there's some people that they want to go back because they get into the older years, life gets complicated. And burdensome sometimes, and people want to go back. In fact, that's why, if you go to the next slide, a lot of people want to go back to their family, I mean, their high school reunion. Uh, this is not mine. Uh, class of 1969. And people want to go back, you know, their class. And so they come back to their class reunion and they try to relive the way it used to be. They want to go back. And we, we see that. Uh, one of the most popular. Radio stations is the Oldie Goldies channel. People listen to the Oldies, the Oldies but Goodies. And uh, we have people right now trying to work on you. I see these headlines all the time. Uh, I think they're working on this now with somebody we can live forever. And you know, people don't want to give up, don't want to get old, don't want to you know, face death. And so they want to just stay forever young. And that's why. Uh, Plastic surgeons, you know, they make, you know, a lot of money because people want to forever stay in the past. You know, I heard, I saw Debbie post that on Facebook this week. That she wanted to do over. She wanted to do over. Life do over. That uh, makes me sad, you know. I want to say to her, and I know you still, you know what, you'd still be young and you'd still make mistakes. You might not have the same mistakes, but you still, you know, I don't know that. Yeah. I don't value too much. The wisdom that, you know, what little I have, I wouldn't go, I want to go back. Well, we do sometimes live with regrets. People live, and I, I, I mean, I can sit all day, and I'd be, you know, a mess. If I sat back and looked at all the mistakes I've made and try to live that. Well, what does the Bible have to say about that? Let's look uh, in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, the beginning of verse 7. Please stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. The Christ has shown me that what I once thought was valuable is worthless. Nothing is as wonderful as knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I have given up everything else and counted all as garbage. All I want is Christ and to know that I belong to Him. I could not make myself acceptable to God by obeying the law of Moses. God accepted me simply because of my faith in Christ. All I want is to know Christ and the power that raised him, from, raised him to life. I want to suffer and die as he did, so that somehow I also may be raised to life. I have not yet reached my goal, and I am not perfect. But Christ has taken hold of me, so I keep on running and struggling to take hold of the prize. My friends, I don't feel that I've already arrived. But I forget what is behind, and I struggle for what is ahead. I run toward the goal, so that I can win the prize of being called to heaven. This is the prize that God offers because what Christ Jesus has done. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Make them alive us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, yesterday, uh, my sister made there a movie I could watch, and so we got on Netflix and tried to find something, and she wanted to watch something, and we couldn't find it. And I said, well, let's find something you've never seen before. So we, we flipped through, and said, oh, this is what I mean. And so, uh, if you would go next, I don't know if I recommend this movie or not, it was called 13, going on 30. And it's about this little 13-year-old girl, and, you know, she's kind of a geek, you know, and, and her friends, they play prank on her, and... And so, in the midst of this prank, she wished that she could be 30 and successful. Well, you know, it came true. You know, the little fairy dust fell down. And next thing you know, she wakes up, she's 30 years old, and she's successful. Well, what got her to be successful 
when she lost her friends, and her very best friend, and then one of the old friends was now her best friend, and she was conniving behind her back. Well, anyway, so when she got 30, she's now 30, got everything she wanted, but she doesn't have her family and her friends. And so what does she want to do? Go back to being 13. And I think, you know, that's what we face sometimes. We, we want success. We want whatever. And then we get, maybe we get there or whatever, but we have regrets. And so what, you know, we will look this morning, what does the Bible say about wanting to go back? I think even in the church sometimes we want to go back to the glory days. And but that's not going to happen. We don't have a time machine. We can't go back to our younger self. And sometimes I think about that, but I don't know if I want to go back and relive any of that. Uh, I've been there, been there, done that. But so let's take a look. And uh, what, what we see in the Word is, and what we see today, is we can't look back. We can't go back. We can't return. And this is what Paul is saying. Remember, Paul, here he is in a prison cell, chained up. And he's probably thinking, you know, we would think, oh, if there was a way out of this by going back and redoing some things, we would change the things a little bit. But what if we didn't? Dr. Charles said we would still face other situations that may be far worse. But Paul was there by God's design. Yeah. How do we know we're not where God we are by God's design? Exactly. I mean, we, it's easy to look at it and say, oh, man, I must have messed up. I must have done something wrong. But how do we know that yep. God hasn't put us exactly where we are in the situation? Exactly. Let's, let's, I want to take a look at some people that look back. Look at that. Uh, in Genesis. When Lot's wife looked back and she became a silver salt. She wanted to go back. She looked back to, to where she was. But it cost her. cost her life. Uh, the Israelites look back uh, in Numbers 14. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taking this plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? In other words, I'll go back to the slavery. Well, rather than to live this life. And so, God's saying, no, it's not better to go back. Question. Rather than to live this life. Yeah, the, the life out there. And, freedom. and for, they were having freedom. They, they didn't know how to live in freedom. And I don't think as Christians sometimes we don't know how to live in freedom. And that's what it was. They were so upset because they were out here in the wilderness. They just, it's just like us. They, they didn't have faith. To believe that what God had promised them would happen yeah. would, would be, you know, mm -hmm. and then I just see that so clearly that so often, I mean, and I read the Word of God, and I and, and it's been so such a blessing to me. Right, like, lately I can't even talk. That's all that's kept me, you know, really kept me centered because either it's true or it's false, and if I believe it, then I have to receive it. I can't just ignore it, and I can't. Doubt. And, and so it's so powerful. Of course, they didn't have God's word, but they had so much that He'd given them, mm -hmm. proved to them that they were. Anyway, it's just faith. Cool. And then, then even Peter, look at Peter. Remember, this was after Jesus was crucified. And here was Peter, and he would. He said, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got to the boat, but that night they thought that what Peter was actually saying. He wasn't saying, hey, let's go fishing. He was saying, let's go back to the old business. Yeah, we got to depend on ourselves. He's gone. Yeah, I've got to, yeah, we got to go back to this. Hey, I'm going with you. This is over. This Christian thing, this Christ thing is over. This disciple thing is over. Let's go back. Just like the people, children of Israel. I mean, God must not be here anymore. Yeah. And it's easy to get that way. It is so easy to feel that way when things go wrong. Well, what we have to do, we have to remember, let's, let's look at this. Remember, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan. It may not look like that he has a plan. It may look like at times, hey, this is just uh, organized chaos sometimes. But it, God has a very specific plan for you. But it all fits in. To his plan. Now remember, I told you about how we look at the past and the future. God looks 
at it as all one picture. He sees the past, the present, and the future. All we have is our past and the present. And sometimes we're afraid of the future. We're afraid of what might be. But God said, hey, that's not anything to worry about. Anything to stress over. Even in the midst of a very bad situation, God says, I've got a plan. I have a plan for you. Yeah, let's look at the next the verse here. It says, uh, all I want is to know Christ and the power that raised him to life. I want to suffer and die as he did so that somehow I may be raised to life. I have not yet reached, look at this, I have not yet reached my goal and I am not perfect. Of course, we know that perfection only comes in heaven. So here I am living my life. Yes, I may be going through trials and troubles. In fact, I said, I want to live like Jesus did. And that was not an easy life. Uh, Jeremiah, the 29 11. I will bless you with a future filled with hope, a future of success, not of suffering. Do you know we take this verse out of context so much? We don't read the verse before. I don't, I don't have it. You know what the verse says? That they, God says, I'm, you're going to go in exile for 70 years. You're going to be in exile. You're going to be slain, basically. You're going to be scattered for 70 years. And then, after 70 years, I'll give you what I promised. You'll go back to the land. In fact, we didn't see that today with Israel. And I've shared that earlier that everything in the Bible is centered around Israel and Jerusalem. Well, we're all worried about Israel being wiped off the face of the map. No, it's the way the other way around. I think I'd rather live there than Yeah, I think that's probably the safest place on planet Earth right now is Israel. Not, not anywhere else. Because we know they're going to win. God's promised them. And so God does, God's going to protect us. Don't, don't worry about it. God's got a plan. And Peter forces, dear friends, don't be surprised or shocked that you're going through testing that is like walking through fire. And sometimes we don't ever equate the fire with God's plan. We don't ever equate the trial and the tribulation. This is part of God's plan. In fact, we think, oh, it's something bad and horrible. We've done something, so we're being punished. That's why. No, God is, what, what's he saying? We go through trials and testing. Why? So that we can persevere. So that we can grow into maturity. So we can't get all bent out of shape and think that God has somehow forgotten us, left us alone when we're going through some difficult times. And usually that's when we want to go back. And that's what the children of Israel want to go back. Because here they were out in the desert. They were for once having to come up with their own food, their own everything. They're having to, you know, instead of living as slaves, but there was no decision making. Here they were out there. And that's what led them to want to go back. And Huh? Yeah, preachers will go back to us. Yeah, they got three meals and no decision making. People tell me when to go, when to go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that, so them is just like that. So, you ever, you ever think about this? Do, do mature believers ever face trials and tribulations? You know, I think sometimes we have in our heads that one day we're going to grow above that. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. That's not going to happen. It is, to me, until we reach the final, we're going to face that. And so we have to keep that in mind. God has a plan for your life. But then we must also recognize God's perspective for your life. Look, we have to look at our lives from God's perspective, not from ours. Again, you know, when this time frame of eternity past to eternity, and here we are in this one little dot, we have to feel that we're, instead of 
God being the center, we're the center, and everything revolves around us. And so we, we, we think that way. But we have to look at we have to look at the whole scheme of life and all of you know the world's existence through God's eyes, through his perspective. And the fact that he has a plan for us. Let's look again at that verse in Philippians. All I want is Christ. This is Paul speaking. And to know that I belong to him. I like that. That I belong. That's, that's the only place where we really belong is with Jesus. I could not make myself acceptable to God by obeying the law of Moses. In other words, I can't make myself acceptable by doing good. Because we always say, oh man, I messed up. God doesn't love me anymore. Well, God's saying, hey, you can't, you can't get any better to make me love you. You can't do more to make me love because God loves us perfectly. So, we can't do anything to make ourselves acceptable. God accepted me simply because of my faith in Christ. We put our faith in Jesus. That's how we're acceptable. So when he looks at us from that perspective, he's not looking to zap us every time we mess up. Because he'd be zapping us about how many thousand times a day, it seems like, you know. And so he, that's not God. Uh, Psalm 103, 7. He made known his ways to us. I'm sorry, I don't have a slide for it. Psalm 103, 7. You can look at it later. But God's ways are not our ways. He does things from a totally different perspective than us. He sees the whole picture, past, present, future, and with our lives. And so we have to keep that in mind. When things are coming in our lives, things that we are encountering, understand God's in control. He's never, ever out of control. He has a situation well in hand. And we have to trust Him. Uh, Romans. Romans 8. Well, I didn't have a slide for it, didn't I? I forgot I did. I just didn't have it on my sheet. <laughs> and Romans 8. We know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love Him. These are the people God chose because that is His plan. All these situations in your life, the good and the bad, even the sin, all these things, do you know that God works through all that? You know, it's a girl or a guy getting messed up big time, and they think, oh no, my life is over. But God works pieces of all that together in that this moment. See, we, we, we're over here in the moment, and God's looking at everything, and it's already worked out. And so we, we can't, don't get stuck in a moment. Trust God through it. Okay, I messed up. God, forgive me. Let's move on. And that's what we have a hard time is the moving on part. Because you know what Satan, he brings it back. Philip, I can't believe you did this. And you call yourself a Christian? Look what you did. You know, God's never, God doesn't love you because of this. Well, yes, he does. Because he's already forgiven me. It's all, I've already been made new. I have to, we have to trust him. We get caught in the trap of trying to work to atone somehow for what we've done. I think that's the biggest trap. Yeah, we, we do. We live a life trying to appease God. When that verse we read before, the way we do that is by believing in Jesus, by trusting him. And again, James 1, 3 says the tests and the trials come so that we can learn perseverance and patience. It's to us to grow. Whatever we're facing, it must be to help us grow. Yes, we do sin. That's God to forgive us and then grow from that, learn from that. The last thing I want to say is we must rely on God's provision for our lives. Rely on God's provision. Now, when you see the word provision, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Material. Material. We always see a provision God's provision as material. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Streets of gold. All of that's, how we, that's how we sometimes view everything. Money. 
I mean, one of the biggest things for, uh, the, for us preachers is prosperity. They talk about money. When I, I'm, I'm sorry. When I start hearing preachers talk nothing about money, I turn them off. Because that's, yes, there are verses in the Bible about money, but that is not what it's all about. What do we do at the end of life when we get the last day and we die? Where's that money go? We don't take it with us. But yet we do manage God's money. I'm not saying we know. But we do. But that's not what it's all about. And it's not about building prosperity here on this earth. It's about, it's about relying upon God. Trusting Him. No matter, as Paul said, no matter what state I am. That's not what Paul did. Paul didn't build a, I don't know, he didn't build a bank account. In fact, so many often, so often he didn't have anything. He, so he had to go build tents. And so, we have, to, we have to rely on God's provision. It's not about money. Let's look at what Paul said. I run, now look at this. I run. Head, I mean, a sprint toward the goal. Now, what's the goal? So that I can win the prize. What's the prize? Of being called to heaven. Our prize is heaven. Our prize is spending eternity with Jesus in heaven. That's what we're running toward. In other words, what are we running toward? Death. We are running towards death. Death is a prize. We don't ever see that. That's not a very good perspective. But our goal is to die. Now, in the right perspective, it's to die in the right relationship with Jesus. We want to be living for him serving him. But it's, that's, that's the goal. Because we're going, not because we're that way, we've already settled that when we put our trust in Jesus. But Paul said, my prize, my goal is heaven. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm living for is the day when I go to meet Jesus. So he was looking forward to dying. This is a prize that God offers because of what Christ Jesus has done. Somebody better get that and make a phone call. Do what? He said he really did run for it. He could have known. He could have avoided being arrested. Oh, yes. He could have changed. He could have. It's so often. That's what we try to do. We try to avoid situations. And. Uh, Man, I go back and think, you know what, if I just kept my mouth shut at this point, if I just didn't stand up for Jesus at this point, and there's people like that just run into it headlong and everybody looks at them like, you idiot, why'd you do that? Why didn't you just play a secret agent Christian? Well, God didn't make us to be secret agent Christians. He put us out there in the midst of it. Folks, we're in a world that's against God. Read the day the headlines. I mean, why do they want to wipe Israel off the map and Christians off the map? Because they don't love Jesus. The, I, we talked Ken back there. This is a spiritual battle that's going on. All this with Israel and all that. It is a spiritual battle, and Satan's goal is to wipe out anything to do with Jesus. That's why ISIS is over there removing any icons. Anything to do with Christianity. They're over there wiping them out and destroying historical artifacts to have anything to do with Christianity. This, this has happened before. The uh, Muslims did this back in, uh, going all the way back to 700s. I mean, they've been doing this for a long time, trying to wipe out Christianity. It's not going to happen. It can't be done. We win. I know I've read the other story. We win. We're victorious in the very end. We have to keep that in mind. Will death come? Certainly. It's not a maybe. It is a certainty. Death will. Do you? Look at me. Look around. You know anybody around that's 200 years old? No, now not. And so we know that's that's what Paul's not. He was not afraid of it. I want to die one way or another. I tell you, a good movie to watch. It kind of gives you a good perspective on it. Is a movie with Will Ferrell 
Dustin Hoffman, Emma Thomas, anyway, it's called Stranger Man.